Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Some in-state bragging rights tonight. It's the Spartans entertaining the gentleman from Kalamazoo, the Broncos of Western Michigan. Michigan State will have to be as good as they have been defensively. And of course, they got to kick that offense into high gear. You cannot play this game, have speed, or anything below your very best. Because it's not about the place, it's about the execution. And hopefully, Michigan State does that tonight. We will get an early look at this Michigan State offense, see if they can prove on last week. Early play action and an early deep ball. Stewart got it. Just like that, Spartans into Broncos territory. Now here's a run. Elijah Collins speaking of space. So they give Collins his first ever start and the red shirt freshman takes it in the red zone with a 29 yard gain. Faking the handoff, easy pitch and catch out wide to the junior tight end, Matt Dotson. Touchdown, Michigan State. The entire offense huddled together, and after that, players just kept repeating all night, all night. So you can feel that spark down here. And that's three defensive penalties already for Western Michigan. And the Spartans capitalize. Ladarius Jefferson untouched. Two drives, two scores for Michigan State. He's already thrown for 120. He wants more. He wants a lot more. He's got him. Stewart, 10, 5, touchdown Spartans. And so far, he's had a really good connection with Daryl Stewart. And all told, the offense was six plays of 20 or more yards. Going up to grab it. First down, Daryl Stewart again. He's been good tonight. That's his fifth catch, and that one for 21 yards. Little reverse. And now a pass to Lewerke. And Lewerke is pancaked inside the five. But it's first and goal as he pops up okay. Now the play fake, and he's going to do the more normal thing, throw it. Touchdown. Cody White on the receiving end. Third passing touchdown of the night for Brian Lewerke. Feels like a pretty big drive. Yeah. If you don't put up more points here before intermission, this might get away from you. Wasik, clean pocket throws, intercepted. Xavier Henderson, first career pick for the sophomore. See how they play this one timeout, 49 seconds. Collins, well, you might play it a little differently now as he gets it all the way out near the 45 yard line. 38 yard attempt here. No problem for Matt Coglin, who was 4 of 4 against Tosa last week. Hits that, and that's a 10 point swing going into the locker room. About 7, 10 a.m., we're on our way over to breakfast. Then about 9 o'clock, we have our workout, and then we're going to get back to camp. I think it's just important to get up here and get disconnected from everything else going on at campus right now, you know, like everyone moving in, the hustle and bustle of Michigan State getting back in order, and just kind of like reconnect with each other and get on the same page heading into the season and into the year. We've had a lot of success in the last couple of years because we've been fortunate enough to come out here together and just get to work. We always start with lightning, like play basketball, get a little bit warmed up, get our heart rate going. Go work. Oh, oh. First thing you need to do is you need to just get in the run and be thorough and feel like you've got good command of your run. If we ask you to bring it up a little bit at the end, it will probably be with about 90 seconds to go or something like that. It won't be an immense amount of time. If you run into trouble, find your calm. It's really important you get back in the breathing pattern, good in the mechanical pattern, and you really just give yourself a short objective, whether it's a minute or two minutes, around the corner, whatever it is, so that you stay in your group and you stay locked into your job. Go have some fun.
beat it. For the most part, it's, it's just like so secluded up here and so beautiful, just like really nice rolling hills with gravel, really good on the feet and, light, and the legs. So we're so fortunate to be up here in Glen Arbor, just getting to work this season. Quick drink of water, nice and easy jog back, really nice. Good job. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Today was even a, a step forward, I would say. I think they, they've they really, in a short order, learned how to work well together. Um, we saw a lot of younger classmates up there in the mix, and everyone was really encouraging, which is something that we promote as a team. It was a, a great start for us. Again, ended on a good note, and we're really excited to see where the season goes from here. You guys were really good. I loved how you integrated um, each other into the front. I think that's a huge step in helping most of us grow and, and just sort of learn to be at the front. We can't be afraid to be assertive when we get into races now. And I don't mean assertive like we don't need to lead the first 100 meters, but when we get to the, near the end of the race, we want to be starting thinking about being at the front because we got that kind of squad. And that's sort of got to be our mentality as we go. Nice job today, guys. Let's keep this momentum rolling through camp and through the first meets. Spartans on three. One, two, three. Spartans! As a fifth year senior, you're, you're kind of more worried about the entire team rather than yourself. Like when you're a freshman or a redshirt freshman, you're kind of focused on your job and you're trying to learn that because you don't really know your job. But being a fifth year senior now, you know, I know my job like the back of my hand. So now it's about helping younger guys like my brother, um, other, you know, incoming freshmen and just helping lead this team as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Not just focused on, you know, what I need to do, but making sure that everybody else is doing what they need to do as well. Demetrius Cox, Connor Cook, he's from Ohio as well. Um, Aaron Burbridge, uh, Riley Buller, those type of guys. They were fifth year seniors at the time, you know what I'm saying? But they had gotten red shirts, so just kind of to allow me to see the end game, you know what I'm saying? It's a marathon, not a sprint. So the advice they gave us was kind of um, just to keep pushing it, you know? Like, I think, you know, a lot of those guys got red shirted as well. And I think for anybody, no matter who you are, that's a, that's a process that, like, nobody can prepare you for, it, you know what I'm saying? It's something that you got to kind of. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with it and everything like that. Red shirting, I feel like it's a different experience, but I feel like it's an experience that can make you, uh, can either help you become better or you get worse. So, uh, you know, I just try to learn from uh, the older guys, just try to, uh, you know, be ready for whenever my opportunity comes. Personally, me, I needed my red shirt year, and I'm happy I had my red shirt year. I've been there before, you know, so I know exactly how they feel and what they're going through. You come in as a high schooler, you're you know, the best thing since sliced bread, you know what I'm saying? And then boom, you hit college and everything just kind of changes for you. So just to understand that like the position you're in right now is not the position you're gonna end up in. You know, it's it's a process. You gotta continue to work. You can't allow that to, like I said, discourage you. You gotta continue to work and you'll be, you'll be successful here. I think it's a good way to start out the season. We just added the track team in a couple years ago and just having everybody be able to come together and, and kind of build that team bond and get, especially for our cross guys, being able to train um, in a beautiful area in Michigan. It's been just a good way to start out the year. It's so great for team bonding. Everything we do involves pretty much the whole team. Like everyone's always playing cards every night, all the running, everyone's just together. Like playing basketball, playing volleyball, all this team bonding, it's a great way for the freshmen to get to know everyone. Like I knew everyone's names last year by the end of camp, that was great. So that's like, Coach Strength always knows the importance of starting the season out. In this area, he, it has a special place for him. You see how the team can come together, and that's why Coach Strength brings us back year after year. It's great for the team dynamic. We get to take people to arguably one of the most beautiful places in the world, and when you get to spend some time where there's not a lot of a lot of other distractions, you just sort of get to know each other a little on a little better terms. And in this environment, really start to establish who our leaders are for the year too. I think it's been that's a big component of it for us. Semino, Coach Senekevich, and I we ask them to to put down some short-term, intermediate, and long-term goals, uh, really kind of what they want to accomplish and how they, they visualize what's going to happen while they're here. That's the one side, and it also lets us put their feet in the fire. It's a little bit of an accountability tool, too. 
<laughs> so tonight, just to give you an overview of what we're doing, we're getting on a couple of buses, three of them. We're going out to uh, Glen Haven, essentially a public dune. We talked about the culture of just making sure we understand what it is we're here for. You're, you're either attending college or you're invested in it, and we want you invested in it. That means your time and effort is going to go a long ways in how this turns out, and we really, really want to make sure you're, you're locked in and we have the best semester we've had so far. And we keep going up. Everybody's responsibility to keep taking us there. You go through this, this training process and through the fall, you're, you're looking for and behaving like the, peop, the leaders that we need from each and every one of you, and, and that's how we push it forward. She's down here. Shoes, shoes. Well, I've been coming here for a number of years, both as a, I came here four times as an athlete, and now I think this is my sixth time coming as a staff member. So now as a coach, I think it's a good opportunity to kind of hit the reset button before we really sit, get going on the season. The past few years, the other coaches can attest, like our team seems to be a lot closer together. Like it seems like there's, there's closer bonds and relationships amongst event groups. Everyone's in so much pain with the hills and the beds and stuff, but we're all going through it together. Something about going through a lot of pain together really brings a group together. So it like really just makes us like that much closer for the season. It's like we're all in this together and it's just great for team bonding. I just like to see their growth. I like to see the opportunity for this. You know, I, I get a really sore back by the end of the week and the bad place to sleep, but you know what? I, it's gratifying, frankly. It's a really cool place. I'm from the area, so it's special to me too. Um, and just to detach from technology and bond and run, it's a really special experience. I apologize if y'all seeing this, we're terrible. So. <laughs> apologize in advance. <laughs> apologize to my pops too, because he's actually a decent dude. Yeah, he's pretty good. I'm growing up, so it's uh, just three boys, raised by my mom and dad in uh, North Ridgeville, Ohio. Growing up, it was just my parents taking us to different sporting events, like pretty much every weekend. You know what I'm saying? We were gone every weekend. Um, had practice, you know, pretty much every evening during the week. So it was just constantly sports, uh, you know, sporting event after sporting event. I was like thrown in the mix at a young age because naturally you want to be out there with your brothers and things like that. My parents, they always took us and made us sure that we were always okay and made sure that we always got to all our events, school and things like that. So we uh, grown up in a really blessed environment. Michael would come to everything, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes he would be forced to by my parents. Sometimes he would come on his own. Um, but he would kind of, he would always be around, like hanging around. We actually had him a shirt um, that was made, like whatever team we were playing on, he was like the half, like his number would be one, like one half. I remember they used to put on halftime shows during our basketball games and all the moms would watch him and um, some of his other little friends on the team shoot around and stuff like that, so it was cool. It wasn't anything with sports, it was with, uh, we was at uh, Cedar Point. And they got to ride all the road coasters because they were taller than me. I remember I was mad because you know, I want to be out there and I want to do, uh, I want to, you know, do the same things as them, so call it, kind of always uh, trace their footsteps. Me and Andrew kind of kept our recruiting separate, but at the same time, we always known in the back of our head that we wanted to, you know, go to, go to school together. It would be so much easier on our parents, on the rest of our family, just to kind of, you know what I'm saying, just as far as coming to games and stuff like that. So um, when Coach D made that possible for us to uh, come to, you know, Michigan State together, um, it was a dream come true. Uh, Michigan State was always kind of high on our list. And so, yeah, when he offered us, um, you know, we didn't look back. Michigan State offered me early. And, um, you know, this is a place where I knew I wanted to be, but at the same time, I didn't want to come here just because my brothers came here. So I kind of went through the recruiting process, was patient. We kind of told him, like, make sure he does his recruiting and all that type of stuff separate, do what he wants to do. Uh, make his decision for himself, you know what I'm saying? I think that's something that he's always kind of had to deal with, kind of following in our footsteps, 
um, even going to the same high school, all that type of stuff. So it was really just kind of wanted to take as much pressure off him as we could, um, allow him to make his decision, go through his recruiting process just like we did. At the end of the day, Michigan State uh, was the best place for me to be in all aspects. I never forget when he, I think he called me, um, and this was like before he made it public that he was gonna commit, he called me and told me, I'm like, yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm gonna commit to Michigan State. Uh, we had did his little uh, commitment video and everything like that back at our high school, so that was pretty cool. It's part of greatest strength. He's in the Warriors standing next to him. Um, so, so yeah, it was really, you know, it was kind of like, Coach D always talks about completing your circles, and that was kind of one thing that we kind of completed together, um, just because now all three of us were gonna be able to play college football together. You know, Coach D always says that everybody has a uh, has a role on this team. So, you know, even if it's on scout team, and last year I was on scout team, so trying to give the best look for the offense or trying to uh, be the person that gets the scout team defense going, you know, that's, a, that's another opportunity. I just try to make the most of that. And I was kind of telling them just to trust the process. Like, to, you got to be patient, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing I didn't necessarily know and I'm trying to teach him is, like, you're going to go, you're going to have opportunities, multiple opportunities here at Michigan State. Um, and just to, when you get those opportunities, make the most of them, but also understand like it's not the end all be all, you know what I'm saying, regardless of the result. Um, so that was the biggest thing that I kind of tried to talk to him about as far as red shirt and like, like you said, it may not happen for him this year, you know what I'm saying, but that doesn't mean he can't get discouraged. He can't allow him that, you know, just because he's may, he may not be as planned as much as he wants to, he can't allow that to discourage him. He just got to keep working and keep focusing on controlling what you can control. He's been in the exact same position I've been. So, uh, you know, I, I take what he says for, uh, I, and I try to value it. Uh, my mentality this year is just try to make the most of every opportunity. If it's on special teams, if it's on scout teams, if it's on, uh, you know, out there on defense, you know, just try to make the most of my opportunities and just play fast. Obviously losing Andrew this year, but I get, get to gain Michael on the field this year. Um, it's definitely gonna be a great experience for me. Uh, just kind of helping him, you know, take his game to the next level just as far as what he kind of sees on the field and everything like that. So it's definitely been a, um, a really good experience for me kind of to see how he grows and how he's maturing. Oh, well, I'll say the biggest thing is like learning how to watch film. And, uh, you know, he always, you know, preaches or tell, talks to me about the details. So kind of just like learning and just li listening to a lot of things that he's been through. I'll be rooting for him. You know what I'm saying? I want him to make plays. I want to see him be successful because I know how much he puts in. I know how much work he puts in. The details matter, you know, like when you go out there in the game, like you can't have a, a mislip like mentally, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's. And, uh, and I think that relates back to practice because if you practice like it's the game and when you get out there, you'll be ready. I'm just extremely, you know, humble um, by this entire process, this whole opportunity. You kind of go through like a roller coaster of different things uh, when you're here at Michigan State. Going into my senior year, kind of, I don't want to look back yet because I do have this entire, you know, these next five months and this entire senior season, and we're going to do some great things this year. Just kind of get us back to that, you know, that upper echelon of college football that we were. And then just to have our, my best year as a senior, you know what I'm saying? That's something Coach D always talks about. Uh, seniors have to have their best year in order for the team to be, you know, have their best year. So um, that's the biggest thing for me, just having my best year individually. And then obviously the team success is going to come as, as well. Touchdown, MSU. I just want to leave my mark on Michigan State. We've been through it all. To get us back to that Big Ten championship, win the East, college football playoff, all that type of stuff, New Year's Six game. To get us kind of back to that upper echelon um, that we know we're capable of doing. We have the team to do it this year. So just really kind of get us back to that. Like that would be, that's, that would be me kind of leaving my mark. And we mentioned this at the top of the broadcast, but a win tonight ties him with Duffy Doherty for most in school history. Is that intercepted? It is. Picked off by Tyreek Thompson. The senior from Detroit gets the Spartans the ball back. Looking to get up over 300 yards. And he's done it. Stewart hurdling his way to the 40. 
15 yards, so Lewerke's over 300 passing, and Stewart is now at 184 receiving. Jefferson dots that eye, he dives, and he's in. Michigan State, another offensive touchdown. This offense has continued to execute at this level with the way that their defense plays, with the way that their special teams plays. You've got to watch out for Sparty in the Big Ten East. Mark D'Antonio has tied Duffy Doherty atop the leaderboard at Michigan State. He does it in grand style, beating Western Michigan 51 to 17. I'm happy we're 2-0. Um, this is really a result of a lot of work by a lot of people. You look at all the players that have been through here in the last 13 years, and you look at the guys now, and then you look at all of our coaches and administrators, and all the people that have that really put forth the effort to make this thing go. They all had to go in one direction, and I felt like we did that from the get-go. We're taking big steps, and we'll continue to do so. So go green. Thank you for all the support from Spartan Nation. We're not done yet.